Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's David Briggs, who's been following this story very closely. David, obviously, uh, the focus of that uh, clip that we just played was really about the issue in minority and black coaches like Brian Flores perhaps not getting a fair look when they're interviewing for head coaching jobs. Uh, give us an update on what the commissioner said yesterday and how the NFL plans on dealing with these allegations. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, so Roger Goodell, almost the entire press conference, the state of the state, was dedicated to Brian Flores, was dedicated to some of the accusations made about the business model of the league. Almost nothing throughout this hour on this game, which is certainly not what Roger Goodell wants to be talking about. He did say, I bear some responsibility for the problem that we find ourselves in. He acknowledged that the, we have not done enough to address the lack of black head coaches in the NFL. But we have to remind you, Roger Goodell works for the owners. It's not the other way around. I hate to break this to people, but there is almost nothing Roger Goodell can do to solve that problem. We thought the Rooney Rule would fix it, which requires minority interviews for both GM and head coaching jobs. It's been an abysmal failure. There are fewer black head coaches now than there were when that rule was instituted. Here's the fact of the matter. There's just nothing we can do unless there's discrimination seen in the interactions, in the emails that may or may not get turned up. That's if Congress gets involved. Nothing Brian Flores pointed to in his lawsuit, and I've read all 58 pages, actually backs up the fact that there was discrimination. Take into account that he got a head coaching job, didn't get it done the way his owner wanted him to do, and quite frankly, Brian Flores would have had another head coaching job, probably in Houston, if he had not been suing the league. This is not what anyone wants to hear. Roger Goodell said they're going to do more to try to address this problem. I'm just afraid there ain't much he can do about it. He cannot tell the owners what to do. His job is to get them rich and to continue to grow the game and the revenues and the television ratings. And he's been an unparalleled success in that regard, there will not be a mandate that they hire minority coaches. There cannot be, you know how well that word mandate goes over with a bunch of older, conservative, white billionaires in this country. Hopefully over time, we will just solve this problem, but that means more black head coaches at the lower levels getting into the coaching profession. There aren't that many at the highest ranks. That means more need to go into the profession and hopefully the Fritz Pollard Alliance and some of these other groups the one thing I was watching for, Brian, ahead of the Super Bowl, would the players start to weigh in and criticize the league and support Brian Flores? And that silence has been deafening. If you heard a Patrick Mahomes, a Lamar Jackson, some of the faces of the league talk about it, it'd be a huge problem. They haven't said a word. Why do you think that's the case? I think, largely speaking, they love this game. They know that they can make Patrick Mahomes, for example, $500 million contract, the highest contract in all of professional sports. They know that this game is beyond healthy. They know that this is a great opportunity for a league that is almost 70% players of color. They don't want to do anything that disrupts that business model. The NFL is largely speaking bulletproof. It doesn't matter what the scandal is. Go back to the Aaron Hernandez situation years ago. The concussions, the CTE, the lawsuits. This league can withstand anything. It is entirely bulletproof. Roger Goodell knows that. I certainly do believe that NFL clubs are urging their players to stay out of this situation, but I have heard nothing to, to back that up. That's just my assumption. There has been no email from league officials or team officials telling players to stay out of it. They just haven't jumped into this at all because, quite frankly, though the numbers are bad, just five minority head coaches out of 32 teams and just two black head coaches – Again, there is nothing inherently showing discrimination. There are sham interviews because of this Rooney rule. A lot of those sham interviews elevate these guys to levels at which they would not have had otherwise and do get end up head, uh, getting head coaching jobs. I've heard some saying we need subjective standards so we know why a guy didn't get a job despite his resume. Well, that's just not how it works in this world. Unless you're in that interview, unless you hear the way that head coaching candidate interviews and convinces them and inspires them in that room, this is something that's going to take several more years to address. 
It's going to come with very slow incremental change. Don't expect it to happen overnight. Goodell also said he'd love to see a minority owner. The only team for sale right now is the Denver Broncos. They will go for north of $4 billion, the highest price in all of professional sports. There's just so many people out there that can that can raise that kind of cash. Byron Allen is the one we've heard thrown about. In my estimation, he doesn't have the kind of money to make that happen, to, to offer a competitive bid. I know the league would like to see a minority owner. It's just very difficult to accomplish. And Dave, kind of underscoring your point earlier about how, look, the NFL is still making money here. Tickets for the Super Bowl, record levels, right? $7,500 a seat is the average. That means I won't be going. Uh, what's the trend in the prices of the tickets for the Super Bowl? I've been saying since the very beginning, the headlines have all said the most expensive ticket in Super Bowl history. And for the time being, that is true. But watch the markets, and I, th I think you're going to see the same thing with ticket prices. I think this is going to be deflate gate two. You're going to see that price collapse in the next two days. I've already seen about between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollar drop in the buy-in, which is the cheapest price of a pair of tickets to the Super Bowl. It was around five thousand forty-eight hours ago. It has fallen on the NFL ticket exchange. You can get there via Ticketmaster to $3,400. That ain't cheap. That ain't cheap, but it is dropping because there's not a lot of demand out there for the Super Bowl. California was expected to be a huge market with the Rams in it and with SoFi hosting this game. It hasn't been. And the Bengals haven't generated. They're only 10% of ticket prices right now of ticket purchases. I think you're going to see a huge collapse in this ticket price in the next 24 to 48 hours. If you want to go, get yourself a plane ticket. Don't buy a Super Bowl ticket. I know this is hard to do, but until Saturday, I think you'll see another $1,000 drop in the next 24 hours. You'll still see some ridiculous numbers put on the board, like a $55,000 uh, per ticket pair of seats in the VIP section around 100. You're always going to see those huge numbers because what that is, is people that have those tickets and they say, hey, let's throw a stupid number out there. We want to go to the game, but if someone's going to give me 110 grand to sit home and watch it on my 80 inch TV, I'll do that. But that's not a serious ticket price. Not many people aside from Antonio Brown pay those outlandish prices. So you'll see those stay high up until the very kickoff. The low end is what to keep your eye on, and those will continue to fall. 55,000, if at that price point, they better let me throw a ball in one play at least. That's a ridiculous amount of money to be paying for one ticket. Yeah. Dave Briggs of Yahoo Finance, thanks so much.